it up and see if we can't get uh, four loads today. That front didn't come in, but um, I don't think the coal has set in yet. I mean, it's still, you know, 70, 72 degrees outside. Uh, the coldest it's going to get today, I think, is uh, like 68 around 8 o'clock this morning. And then uh, tomorrow morning it'll be a lot cooler, so I'm looking forward to that. Just ready to get, ready, get away from some of this heat. So anyhow, uh, we got a little bit of rain, but I don't think it was enough to mess anything up. Uh, in this field we're going to now, we didn't get very much, if any. Uh, the other field is one I'm worried about. It said we got, well I got two different rain apps. One said I got three eighths, and the other one said I got three quarters. So the three eighths I can live with, the three quarters. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of worried so I'm doing this field first and then uh, it'll give that other field time for it to dry because there's a, a dirt road going back to the haystack so I just don't want to run anything up so anyhow let's get started and uh, we'll be on our way all right so this morning we had a little bit of an issue I uh, loaded the trailer up and on the first load I took all the oil hubs I did that and I noticed one of my tires was flat on the trailer so uh, it wasn't ruined it was just flat so anyhow I uh, went ahead and swapped it out with the spare I have I was gonna keep hauling. Well, as I was doing my, while I was finishing my walk around, I noticed the outside tire on the back of my truck was uh, squatting a little more than normal. So I thought maybe it was just low. So I kicked it and it seemed fine. But when I reached on to the inside tire to see how it was, it was flat. So, uh, I didn't want to make the trip without having a spare if I did swap it out. So, uh, I called the tire shop. They opened at 7.30, so I had to wait about 30 minutes for them to open. And uh, I called the guy, and he had one of his guys come out. He got there around 8.30. And he got there and he took the uh, tire off my truck that was flat and then I gave him the tire that I had already removed that was flat and uh, he ended up having to take it back to his shop to have it swapped out or to repair them and so uh, anyway both pieces both tires still had the piece of metal in them I don't know where I ran into them at, but um, anyway, this is what they look like, and uh, so yeah, so he eventually got back, he, uh, we put the tire back on the truck, and then uh, the tire that came off the trailer that was flat, he had repaired it, I went in and put that one back on the hay trailer because it matched the other one better. And so, uh, anyhow, I'm back going and we're gonna try to get at least two, three loads done today. Love it when cows do that. They know you're gonna stop, so they just test you. But anyhow, uh, you see some hay already out. That was my last load from yesterday. So, uh, anyhow. We're gonna go ahead and dump this load and then uh, head back and try to get a, a second one. And then later we'll attempt to get the third. I know I'm gonna get at least three loads out unless you know I have some kind of breakdown, but uh, if, he, if I have to drop it at night, I'll drop it at night, but I'm gonna get my my uh, three loads at least. That's to me that's a minimum what I have to get. So anyhow, let's go out there and dump it. We'll head back.
Good morning. And I just said we're going to load the shirt up and that's what we're going to do. But I like to kind of show how beautiful it is out here. Yeah, my truck was pretty foggy. Pretty cold. Keeps wanting to fog up my lens. But eventually a little... Uh, <clears throat> Eventually it'll uh, stop doing that. So anyhow, it's beautiful and quiet out here. It's hard to believe that there's a major highway just on the side of them trees, about maybe a mile. You can hear the traffic going. But anyhow, <clears throat> trailer's pretty easy to use. You just come in here and flip it up manually, both sides, and there's a crank on the back. You just crank it and it locks it in place. There's uh, three or four pins on both sides that hold it. And then when you get there, when you crank on it, that bracket right here, which is one piece, all the way to the other side, it rides up and down. That center piece is connected to the jack. So when you push it forward, that moves forward and it comes off of that metal post that you see right there. So that's how it works. Very simple. And uh, I like it like that. That way there's less things to go wrong. The tractor we're gonna be using is my uh, John Deere 5100E. 100 horsepower. It's a beautiful tractor. It's uh, perfect for what I do. This is the one I run on the baler. And well, currently it's the one I do on the rake and the baler. Uh, I hope to get another tractor this uh december so then this one will be this one will just be my cutter and um the new tractor hopefully i'll be able to uh run the flex rake and baler together and the bigger tractor will run it so this will be my smaller of the two the one i'm hoping to get is about 130 135 horsepower so anyhow Good morning. It's been, uh, I think, two days since I started this video. <clears throat> we got, we have 10 loads delivered. I'm going to try to do two more today. And uh, 
then I probably won't haul any tomorrow. And then I'll try to do two loads on Sunday. That'll be uh, 14 loads in total. So we'll see what that looks like. And then, depending on what I have left, if any, I might do one or two loads on uh, Monday. Uh, just kind of play it by ear and go from there. I uh, got some things that I need to take care of. I got to call the mechanic have him come out here and look at this John Deere 2750 that's right, I don't know if you can see it or not but anyway this tractor right here um, I had the AC worked on and it got it working but now the uh, temperature gauge is not working and so uh, this is my grandpa's tractor he passed away uh, last month and uh, I mean it's still you know their tractor my grandma you know, it's it's hers but uh, anyway I had a lot of stuff done to it and uh, AC works in it now but for some reason the uh, temperature gauge ain't working in fact none of the gauges really worked on it except for the temperature gauge and now it's not working so I don't know if it could be something simple I, I don't know but anyway um, I'm going to just keep hauling and do what I do and I'm going to call the mechanic that got the AC working and have him come out here and look at it and see what's going on with it and then I also got to find out and you notice the hay spike was missing on it um, we were loading the trailer the other day, my son was and it had a homemade hay spike on the, on the front what it was, he had a a rear three-point hay spike and he had it he made a, an adapter for it to, so he could put it on this loader and anyway the the welds on the bottom one side broke which is fine uh, it really kind of wasn't a, such a bad thing because on that loader when you rolled it back to pick it up as far back as you can like a tilt it back it didn't tilt the bells back very far and so Luckily, since it was one of the bottom brackets, I talked to the guy at the machine shop about making the bottom brackets about two or three inches longer, so that way it kind of tilts back more. It would, you know, going down, you know, pitching it down the pitch, not a problem. Dang, I see some deer, some hogs, a little bit of everything out here today. But anyhow, sorry, I just the hogs are terrible out here. They just really tear up your field puts all kinds of holes out here that's why in this field you can only drive about i don't know four to five miles an hour top top speed is um and that's with a tractor that has you know front wheel drive has bigger tires on it like that 2750 i don't like going over three miles an hour with it maybe four but anyway um so he's going to add about two or three inches to the bottom brackets and let them stick further back and that will make the uh, end of the hay spike stick up on the end so it, I think that way it'll be easier to uh, to move the hay around with it and everything else so anyhow
right, well, we did two loads today. Uh, I got the uh, kids on the bus. You know, went straight to the field. Made pretty good time. Uh, no issues. Everything ran real good. Uh, now I'm almost back home. I'm going to get there. Go ahead and hook the jumper cables up to my other truck. Let it sit there for a while, let it charge, and uh, maybe about 10 minutes or so, and then go out there, maybe even longer, I don't know, but uh, try to jump it off, jump it off, and I'll uh, head over to Blessing, and see if I can put some, get them to put some, uh, two new batteries in the truck. When I called them this morning, I looked at the batteries that were in this truck, and the, the batteries in this truck are 850 cold cranking amps. And so I'm not even sure what the original batteries are with these trucks. I, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, he said that uh, when I get there, they'll put some in here that'll fit it. He said it might just need like a seven. They have, a, they have a 750 and then they have a 715. I think he said 715. I'm not sure. But anyway, he said they'll put whichever ones will uh, fit better. And they, they put a will install them for me. So that's always a big plus. I don't have to fool with like, any of that. So anyhow, uh, I'll do that. So I don't have to worry about jumping that truck off all the time. And, just been I've been so busy with hay and hauling and everything else I just it's kind of hard for me to shut everything down just so I can take my truck to the shop I'm just nowhere near here while I'm hauling so uh, by the time I get home it's already dark and uh, anyhow I just uh, if I can get this done then I can leave this truck hooked up to the hay trailer and just take my other one back and forth to work so anyhow uh, we're gonna get there so far I've hauled 12 loads to the people uh, near Cuero. So they're supposed to get 25 loads. They want 350 bales. So I'm going to maybe haul two of them on Sunday. We'll see. It just depends how things go elsewhere. And uh, whatever I don't get done Sunday, I'll try to get done Monday. And that should wrap it up. Uh, for the first cutting and then I'll just get with them about that and then uh, I'll finish their order with the second cutting Tuesday my daughter has a she gets her braces taken off and then Wednesday weather permitting again weather permitting uh, I'm gonna go custom cut this one guy's place he's gonna rake and bail it he just needs me to cut it so uh, Tuesday after her appointment, I'll probably meet him and uh, look at all that needs to be done. And then Wednesday, I'll cut the fields that he needs. And then after that, I'll take the tractor back down to uh, where I knew where I live. And I got a 10 acre patch over there that it's ready to cut. So uh, and again, weather permitting I'll cut that and as soon as I cut that then I'll uh, I'll put the uh, I'll load the cutter on a trailer and take that back to uh, the hay field where the 2750s at hook that back up and then Thursday or Friday I'm sorry Friday uh, I if Mark isn't doing anything I'll have him uh, see if he can cut some hay for me because I work that weekend so I'll be off Monday so if he cuts it all on Friday well by Monday he should be ready to bail so we're just gonna kind of play it all by ear and uh, hope it goes smooth that's that's the main thing I just I just want to go I just want to go smooth uh, if, if he doesn't cut it Friday maybe he can cut it Monday or Tuesday and the following weekend, I can, I can uh, rake and bail it. I'll have my son with me, and he can run the rake, and I'll run the baler. So 
he likes doing that kind of stuff. So anyhow, I'm gonna let y'all go and uh, appreciate y'all watching the video. If y'all would, please hit that like, subscribe button, share it, ring that little notification bell, so that way you'll get the newer videos.